We learn a bunch of new tricks with our Glowforge, and we use those tricks to make this 3D a door hanger. And we'll show you how we did it right now. What is up? Welcome back. Do you like to do it, build it, or make it? I know you do. That's why you're here. Because we do it every week. And if you want to be cool just like Megan, you can find us over on Patreon. This week, we're venturing outside. Well, to our porch. Porch area. Back to the front porch this week. And we're doing it with a 3D wooden front door home sign thing with some poppin' posies. Poppin' posies? Yeah, hmm. poppin' posies. I like it. Wooden perennials on the, on the sign. How do you know they're perennials? I don't Maybe know. they're annuals. Oh, I didn't even know what perennial meant. I, I just know you knew didn't. it was associated <laughs> I with know flowers. You, I know you did it. <laughs> <laughs> that one in the peas, okay. Yeah, it was pea and it had to do with flowers. <laughs> You're just gonna ad lib your way through this whole thing. That's how I do it every week. <laughs> Step one! We're gonna gather all of our supplies. We just needed a piece of quarter inch MDF a piece of eighth inch MDF, and some paints, and of course paint brushes, unless you want to use your fingers. No. Hmm. Step two! Now we're going to make all of our cuts. We're going to take this one down to the CNC machine and cut an 18 inch circle. Then we're going to take this one over to the Glowforge and cut out the letters and have the flowers scored exactly where you have to paint them. That's my favorite part. But we're learning, as we continue to use the Glowforge, we're learning lots of new things. So we're going to show you a few more tips slowed down this week we'll in down. the what Adobe Illustrator and then over in the Glowforge app. Now, you don't have to use Adobe Illustrator. You could use Inkscape. But some of these things will work for both. I'm an Adobe man. Been there for years. Yeah. yeah. So I'll meet you over in Illustrator right now. Here we're in easel. We're going to set the dimensions of our board and our thickness. Choose our board type, MDF. Here we're going to insert a circle, size it to 18 inches. It's an 18 inch round. And then we're going to set our blade depth to a quarter inch and cut on path. I'm going to open up Illustrator. Then I'm going to drag the flower JPEG and the home JPEG onto my board, my artboard. I'm going to size them to about the size of the Glowforge board. I'm going to create two layers. I'm going to use one layer for scoring. I'm going to set that color to blue because I like blue for scoring. And my other layer is going to be red. And I'm going to call that one cut. Now I'll be able to separate the two layers that I want to do. I'm going to select home. I'm going to use the image trace tool to trace it. I'm going to use a default setting of black and white mode. It's just black and white. Then I'm going to expand it, ungroup it. Then I'm going to select the background. I'm going to select same appearance and hit delete. That should delete anything that was white. I'm going to hide home to get out of the way. I don't want to deal with it right now. I'm going to select the flowers. I'm going to use my image trace tool. I'm going to try one of the default settings of six colors. Now it looks a little wonky. I'm going to bump it to seven. Great. I see all the colors I saw before. So I'm going to unpreview. I'm going to hit trace. Now I'm going to expand it, ungroup it. I'm going to select the white background again. Then I'm going to do select, same appearance, hit the delete key. All the white should be gone. I'm going to select the entire image again. Oh, wrong tool. I'm going to select the entire image again. <laughs> I'm going to group it so it all stays together. Then I'm going to remove the fill and set the outline to red. Remember, outline of red is a cut. I'm going to select the entire image, copy, paste, 
I'm going to set this outline to blue. Blue is my score color. I'm going to separate the layers. I'm going to move this layer of blue. I'm going to move this layer of blue, this one, this one, up to the score layer. Now I can hide it. I'm going to select all of the blue, unhide the red, and line them up. They should snap into place. Now I'm just going to hide the red. I'm going to ungroup the blue. Now I can use my select tool and select all the paths and just delete anything that I don't want scored. It's okay to leave some things that might get scored and cut because it doesn't matter. You're cutting it anyway, right? I'm gonna unhide the red. Looks good, you can see where all the cuts are all, and where all the scores are. I'm gonna hide the blue and remove all the lines that I don't want cut. And I'm gonna merge those lines that I do want to stick together. Like, I want all of these to come out as one piece so it's a lot easier to paint. So I'm gonna make them touch. I'm gonna merge them and then I'm gonna clean up the lines that didn't really go through. I'm gonna use my select tool. I'm gonna merge, merge, merge. Say I'm going to need some cleanup. I'm going to merge all those. You just come in with your select tool and select those handles and hit delete key and you'll be deleting those lines. It gets a little tedious but it makes it look good. I'm going to unhide the blue. Looks great. Now I'm going to do the same to home. I'm going to remove the fill. Make sure it's set to red. That's my cut. I'm going to try to get it all to fit on one board now. Remember to select all the layers if you're going to move it or resize it so they all move and resize together. All right, looks great. I'm going to export it as an SVG. Give it a little name so I remember. Here we're using regular old NDF that you can get at your home improvement store and we're adding paper masking tape. Just plain old old school paper masking tape. It can't have any wrinkles in it. It's got to be perfectly flat and not overlapping so that it cuts perfectly. And then I cut out a little QR code from the proof grade materials that I used to trick the camera. Here we're uploading our SVG image into Glowforge. It comes in a little bit smaller so we're going to select everything and just resize the whole image to fit our board. And notice here that home comes in gray and not red. We've realized as a lesson learned that it was hanging off the board just slightly. So we had to nudge it to get it back onto the board and poof, turns red. Now it will cut. And you see that all of the proof grade selections are selected because of the QR code. Click print and it starts with the scoring. That's the first layer he did. And then it goes right into the cuts. So you'll notice that they did the score and then the cut, and that's the order of your layers. Step three, now we're gonna paint. Oh. <laughs> First tea. <laughs> okay, so this time we've decided we're going to use a quarter inch round. It's only quarter inch thick, 18 inches round. And that's because the ones from the hardware store or your home improvement store, those are nice, but they're very heavy. And I found that when you open and close the door, they beat the door a little bit. And I try and put some double-sided tape on the back, but it comes loose and it still beats the door. So this time we're gonna try using um, this quarter inch thick, 18 inch round. Yeah, every time the wind blows, I feel like somebody's knocking. It do, Yeah, it does sound like it's knocking. <laughs> so this is the first time we've used a quarter inch round and we're gonna see how that turns out. And secondly, so we've made our cuts. They're on our little um, quarter inch board here. It still has the transfer tape on it or... Duct tape or... Uh, masking, tape, masking tape, like traditional masking tape. So it still has the masking tape and I think it's going to be easier to paint and peel tape as we go. That way it doesn't, uh, I think it just protects staying inside the lines a little better than um, if we peel everything off and pop it out. So we're gonna try doing it this way, kinda 
paint as we go. And hopefully it'll stay in place a little better while we're trying to paint it. Right, it'll make it easier to paint all these little things because they won't be moving around. Although, I will share a little tip we learned from watching someone else's video, which I thought was very clever, is using, do we have them close by? Yeah. Glue dots. Putting a glue dot down and putting like maybe one of these little flower buds right on the glue dot and then you can paint it and it doesn't move. So yeah, we won't good. probably won't use that today, but you can put that in your little tip bin and use it later. <laughs> put it in your tip bin. <laughs> I'm using some coastal blue chalk paint. Right, that's new to me. I saw it on Amazon, I think, that this uh, Rust-Oleum's Coastal Blue, and I thought it was beautiful. So I'm using it today because I think it's such a pretty color. Okay, so it did still bleed down the sides a little bit, but we have a trick for that. Use a little Sharpie and then you can clean up the edges with the Sharpie marker so that they stay black. Or you could just be a better painter than we are. <laughs> Step four. Now we're going to glue it to the board. We're going to use my favorite glue. That's sarcasm. <laughs> E6000. It's like glorified rubber cement. And thanks to your tips, we're gonna do a combination of E6000 and hot glue. So it'll make it stick down, stay down, and stick right now. If you watched our Glowforge video, we decided to buy the Glowforge in order to add some more stuff to our store. <laughs> Maybe that's why I decided to buy the Glowforge. But anyway, this is going to be our first new kit to, that we're adding into our store using the Glowforge. It will come with everything that you see here, the round, the letters, and the flowers. You'll have to pick your own paints. Don't forget to join us on Facebook, Instagram, and Patreon. And really, don't forget to hit that thumbs up, and if you're not yet subscribed, that subscribe button. And hit that bell to join us every week for a new project.